Thank you for attending day one of the Food Revolution Summit. We hope that you're enjoying the speakers so far. I'm Nicole D'Andrea Russer, Food Revolution Network's dietitian and recipe developer, and I'm really excited to bring to you each and every day some tips and tricks that you can use in your kitchen. Our hope is that you leave feeling inspired with confidence and more knowledge so that you can create these recipes in your own kitchen. Today we are making not your store-bought black bean burgers. You might love the veggie burgers that you get in the grocery store in the frozen section, and they are fantastic when you're in a pinch. However, we think you're really going to love today's recipe. There are three reasons, many reasons, but three main reasons that we really love this recipe. Number one is that it takes less than 30 minutes to make. That includes preparation and grilling time. So if you're grilling on your stovetop or outside in the grill, it's that time of year, this recipe is gonna be really quick to come together. Number two, they make fantastic leftovers. So you can either store the leftovers in the refrigerator and have them for days to come for lunch, or you can cook them, then place some parchment paper in between them, place them in the freezer, and you'll have them for weeks to come. Number three is one of my favorite reasons, that they're super economical. This entire recipe costs less than $10 to make, which equates to about $1.13 per burger, which is pretty fantastic. We will warn you, however, that this recipe may cause you to break up with your favorite frozen black bean burgers that you get from the grocery store. Okay, the key to this recipe, and really any recipe for that matter, is something fancy called mise en place. It is a French phrase meaning having everything in its place. Having all of your ingredients pre-cut, ready to go in their bowls or dishes so that you can easily prepare the recipe when it comes down to making it will make your life so much easier. So for this recipe, let's go through each of the ingredients. We have already pre-made our rice, our beans, we've already pre-cut our onion. So we've got one and a half cups of black beans ready to go. So you can make these yourself. If you make black beans at home, that is fantastic. Um, so this is one and a half cups of black beans, or if it's easier for you to purchase canned, that's fine. Just strain them and make sure you're looking for a BPA-free can. Next, we have one cup of short grain brown rice. There is a reason why we use short grain brown rice is because rice in these black bean burgers acts as a binder. And if you use long grain brown rice, it doesn't stick together as well. So it's important to stick to short grain. And of course we use brown for that extra fiber. Then we have one cup of walnuts, chopped walnuts. So we're gonna roast these. They only take a couple of minutes to roast. It brings out some delicious flavors from the walnuts before we blend them with the spices, which brings me to the spices. And I basically have added all the spices together because they are gonna go into a food processor with the walnuts. Um, but basically, basically what's in my spice jar here is one tablespoon of cumin, one tablespoon of chili powder, two teaspoons of smoked paprika. You can also use regular paprika if you prefer that it's not smoked. Um, one teaspoon of turmeric and one teaspoon of garlic. Salt is optional, you don't have to use it. These spices add so much flavor that you probably don't even need it. Then we have one medium onion that's been diced. We're gonna saute this for a couple of minutes before adding it to the burgers. And then finally, we have another binding ingredient. It is one third of a cup of almond meal. So the almonds, the walnuts, the brown rice, they kind of act like binders bringing everything together. And then we've got our rock star of the burgers, the black beans. And then finally, just as a side, just in case we need it, we saute our onions, which you can dry saute onions very easily in a hot stovetop pan. However, sometimes you might need a little bit of water or vegetable broth to deglaze the, the pan and prevent them from sticking. So we've got a little bit of water here in case we need it to deglaze those onions. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start by sauteing the onions and at the same time, we are gonna roast the walnuts on the stovetop. Big time saver if you can do two things at once, just make sure to keep an eye on both of them so that nothing burns. The walnuts actually quick very cook very quickly. Let that pan heat up a little bit. So the walnuts I'm actually gonna put on like a medium high heat, but I'm gonna keep an eye on them because nuts can roast very quickly and burn very quickly. So you definitely wanna keep an eye on them and shake it up every once in a while. So we'll let them roast just for a couple of minutes. This pan, as you can see, it's getting heated. Um, 
Basically what happens with dry sauteing when you don't use oil in a pan is you want to get the pan nice and hot. That is what helps to close the pores in the pan and it will prevent the onions from sticking. So we're going to let it get nice and hot there and then saute the onions. And as I mentioned earlier, it's always good to keep a little bit of water or vegetable broth on hand close just in case for some reason they do start to stick a little bit you can easily deglaze the pan with some water or vegetable broth so the other trick to dry sauteing is to continuously stir so getting the pan nice and hot continuously stirring the onions will prevent them from sticking but again, if you need to use a little bit of oil, uh, not oil, <laughs> just kidding, um, a little bit of vegetable broth <laughs> or water, then that's totally fine. And don't forget about your walnuts. These are all going together, so I'm going to go ahead and use the same spatula and toss them around a little bit. The onions are sizzling, you can hear them cooking. Really, you just wanna get them till they're translucent. So bringing out some of their flavor, which only should take about three to four minutes. Keeping them on medium to high heat as you're doing this. And again, continuously stirring. And if you could smell them, the aroma is amazing. Part of what gives onions that amazing aroma is, um, some of those their compounds onions have phytonutrients in them that make sure also makes your eyes water when you're cutting them it's actually a healthy thing when we eat them but that's what that aroma is right now is that amazing aromatic scent so these are actually almost done one more toss of the walnuts and then after we're done roasting the walnuts, we're going to blend them in a food processor with the spices. And then we're gonna add all this together in a bowl. And it's all gonna come together with the beans and the almond meal. And then we're gonna make our burgers, it's really simple. The onions are getting pretty translucent at this point. So it's been a couple minutes and it's not sticking. We haven't had to use our vegetable broth or water at all, actually. So keeping an eye on it. Okay, I think they are about done. So the next step is gonna be transferring the walnuts to the food processor. Next, we are going to blend the roasted walnuts in our food processor, along with the spices. Again, there's a tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of cumin, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, which you could substitute regular paprika for the smoked if you don't want the smoky flavor. You've got a teaspoon of turmeric and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Salt is optional. You really don't need it in this recipe. And then we are going to blend until it becomes a mealy consistency. You don't want to blend it until it becomes, you don't want a wal spiced walnut butter. So you just want it so it's a mealy consistency. It literally took less than 30 seconds to blend, and if you can see that beautiful hue from all the gorgeous healing spices, that is what it's supposed to look like. Clean hands using here, of course, but it's just like a little mealy texture that you want for this walnut meal, spiced wal walnut meal. Okay, so we have our beautiful spiced walnuts and our sauteed onions ready to go, as well as our short grain brown rice and the almond meal. But first, we are going to blend or mash. This is the fun part because you get to use your muscles. We're gonna mash the rock star of this recipe, which are the black beans. And you basically just wanna mash enough so that you've got about three quarters of them that are mashed pretty well. But you wanna leave about one quarter Whole, and that's going to add some texture to your burger. But by mashing them slightly or three quarters of the way, it's also going to help to bind them together a little bit. So, but then it's always fun if you see some of the burgers, maybe you've noticed the burgers that are in your store-bought veggie burgers, they always have whole beans in there and it's always fun to 
find some whole beans in your burgers. So that's what we're doing. But they're gonna be even better. Okay, so just scrape that. If you don't have a potato masher, by the way, you can very easily use a fork or a sturdy spatula or a spoon. So whatever works for you. Mash them up. Right now there's about three quarters. Three quarters of them are mashed. And then we're just gonna add the rest of the ingredients. So adding the sauteed onions and I'm getting noisy in the kitchen, sorry. Adding the almond meal and the short grain brown rice. By the way, if you don't have brown rice or if you don't want to use brown rice, you could also use um, quinoa or millet in this recipe. They work really well as binders. So those also, and it's a fun way to get in some different grains because you know, all kinds of grains are unique in what they offer in terms of nutrients. So quinoa being really high in protein, millet is another grain that's really high in fiber, and it's just fun to experiment with different grains. So they can also be substitutes. Scraping all those delicious spices out and the walnut, and then we're just gonna mix this together. And that is the last step before we get to get our hands dirty. So, and you'll see that this starts to turn a beautiful black bean burger color and those spices are adding so much nutrition you know that spices pack more nutrition gram for gram than most of our fruits and vegetables so don't ever discount your spices they're really a great source all of those colors that are in the spices they get their colors from phytonutrients or plant nutrients that are healing to us when we eat them so turmeric, I'm sure you know about turmeric. Oh, by the way, I put turmeric in here and I'm gonna add a little dash of black pepper because you probably know if you take turmeric um, or if you've read about turmeric that the effects, the healing effects of turmeric, all those anti-inflammatory benefits are enhanced when you combine it with black pepper. So black pepper really brings out turmeric's healing benefits. So it's always good to add a little bit of black pepper with the turmeric. All right, so this is mixed and ready to be formed into burgers. We're gonna wash our hands and get ready to get messy. Are you ready to get your hands dirty? This is the fun part. If you have kids, make sure to bring them into this part because they can get their hands dirty. And the great thing about kids working in the kitchen is number one, you can teach them to get excited about working in the kitchen, but also you get to teach them about healthy food and kids love to eat what they make. So oftentimes, hopefully, right? Um, but yeah, so they hopefully will eat these high fiber veggie burgers. So I like to just dig in. You could use a utensil here, but why dirty utensil? Well, you can use your clean hands. Um, plus you need about a handful of these burgers before you mash them into a patty. So I just grabbed, scooped a little bit out with my hands and we are going to place them on the baking sheet. And hopefully you can see the combination of these gorgeous spices that are giving it a little bit of an orange, orange red hue. Again, those healing phytonutrients and the black beans that we left whole are also in here. So that gives it some texture. And again, you're just getting your hands a little messy and it's a lot of fun. And by the way, with the kids, who knows, maybe you will bring out their inner chef. So that could be fun. So we're just gonna place these. You should get about eight patties total. I'm placing them on a baking sheet just for ease of transferring them to the oven. But you also have the, um, sorry, not the oven, to the stovetop. So we're gonna grill these on the stovetop just for time purposes because we wanna make them in less than 30 minutes, which is what we promised you guys in the beginning. And if you don't want to grill them, or if you have a little bit more time, you can always stick these in the oven while they're on the baking sheet. So a parchment lined baking sheet and bake them for 40 minutes at 350 degrees. So you've got a couple of options here. And this looks like it's gonna make eight burgers total. I'm going to move one of them over. 
Did I mention getting messy? Could you get a little bit messy here? All right, so our burgers are ready. I have a little bit left over, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna donate this last little bit to the smallest looking burger, to the one who looks like it needs it. And these are ready to either be baked or grilled on the stovetop, or if you have a grill and you're ready to start grilling for the springtime, you can always place these on the grill. They're really great on the grill and they hold together. Okay, so we are going to grill these on the stovetop. Our griddle is getting nice and hot. Um, again, you can do this outside on your grill if you prefer to do that. Um, it's always fun for a little friend and family gathering. And we're gonna add them once it's hot. So you'll probably have to do this in two batches because obviously you're not gonna fit all eight burgers on here. So we'll do four at a time. And I think it's kind of perfectly hot because they are sizzling away and they're holding together nicely. That is from the almond flour and the brown rice and the walnuts and some of our mashed beans. So we're going to let these grill for about three to four minutes and then flip them over and then grill the other side until they get nice and brown and crisp on either side. Okay, are you ready to assemble the burgers? This is your opportunity to pack a ton of nutrition in one meal. But even if you decide just to eat the black bean burgers by themselves, you're already gonna get a ton of nutrition. You have so much fiber through the black beans, through the rice, through the almond meal, and even the onions, which have a special fiber called prebiotic fiber that helps to foster a healthy gut. So know that these alone are packed with fiber and they're gonna help with heart disease prevention and cancer prevention. Also, black beans have something called anthocyanins, which is a phytonutrient that has been shown to lower blood pressure and also prevent against heart disease. So you're getting all kinds of nutrition in these burgers alone. But what I love to do whenever making a sandwich or any kind of meal, stir fries, oatmeal, any kind of meal, think about layering. Think about layering tons of nutrition and colors into your, into your dish. So basically, you want to aim for at least three colors per meal. So three plant-based colors per meal. I should specify plant-based colors. Um, so adding things like to this burger, which we already have tons of nutrition, we're going to add some red onion, which is also packed with anthocyanins, the same substance that gives black beans their color, gives red onion their color, which by the way, just food for thought, is this a red onion or a purple onion? I know I've always called it a red onion, but perhaps we should call it a purple onion because it does look purple to me. And next we are going to add some red tomatoes. Red tomatoes get their color from carotenes and carotenes, specifically lycopene and tomatoes have been shown to help with cancer prevention. And then finally, we are also gonna add some broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts contain something called sephoraphane. And sephoraphane is a plant compound that has been researched for also its cancer prevention. It's a really positively potent compound in plants and you get a ton of sulforaphane in just a little bit of broccoli sprouts. So I definitely recommend adding them to any of your meals throughout the day. Also, you don't have to do bread. We have got a whole grain sprouted bread here. If you wanna make it into a traditional sandwich, that's fantastic. But you can also use something like these beautiful Swiss chard leaves. If you can find some nice big leaves in your grocery store, perhaps you're growing them in your garden, which is even better. And uh, it could be romaine leaves, it could be collards. Collards make a great wrap. And just go ahead and add your burger to the leaves. You're gonna do the same thing. Add all of your healing phytonutrient rich vegetables, layer your foods, adding tons of color. Um, it looks so pretty right now. And then also, if you wanna add a little sauce, I love to do something also just to add like tons of texture. So you've got crunchy leaves and like the burgers are a nice moist consistency. They, they stay together well, but they're also, um, you know, got the beans, the whole beans in them. And you've got the tomatoes and the onions for a different consistency. And then a little bit of creamy, this is kind of missing creamy. So adding a little bit of creamy, this is a homemade tofu sauce. You can use any of your favorite sauces. You can create a cashew cream or any kind of sauce out of tofu. Tofu makes a really creamy sauce. And 
stay tuned and for a future segment where we will be making actually some dressings and talking about different ways that you can make sauces and dressings very easily from whole plant-based foods. So I'm going to go ahead and just add sauce to one side of the bread and a little drizzle on top of the greens that are packed with all of these nutritious vegetables and put it all together and look at that sandwich. So that is a packed sandwich filled with nutrition and we are ready to do the taste test. And now for the fun part, the taste test. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, so good. I can taste so many flavors and textures in there. You can definitely taste the black bean burger even though we added so many different vegetables to this sandwich because we added so many spices to this black bean burger. So don't be afraid to use spices in your, in your, any burgers that you're making at home, the veggie burgers that you're making at home, because they really give the veggie burgers a pop. So it's delicious. Again, it's got textures and flavor and so much nutrition for heart disease and cancer prevention. So good for you. So I'm really excited. I hope that you learned a lot today during this segment, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow to seeing you. I am Nicole D'Andrea, Russell at Food Revolution Network's dietitian and recipe developer, and tune in tomorrow because we'll be making a 10-minute prep chili.